Howdy, howdy. It's Chief from Spreadshot Games. I'm back. Keep the video content rolling. This is going to be a video response to Machine Games TX. He's having a subscriber giveaway. Um, I want to say right off the bat, especially to Machine Games TX, uh, thanks for subscribing to me. I found your channel because you subbed to me. Uh, I know the cutoff date on this was like the February 20th or until you got 250 subscribers. I think I was subscriber 228, but I checked this morning, you have like a little over 300. So I don't know if it's cut off, but you're getting a video response out of me anyway. And to any other uh, YouTubers watching this video, go check this guy's channel out. Uh, it's great. He's got awesome pickups. He's got a really cool collection. He's got a really awesome game room. He's very enthusiastic, got a great attitude, and he's really informative. Everything I really look in, somebody I really want to watch on YouTube. Um, his content is great. It's got awesome production value in it. So go check him out. He's got some really sweet pickups. Um, like between him and Michigan and the stuff I've watched between, I think, in the last two and a half weeks, uh, it's insane the amount of stuff I've seen these guys pick up. But he's asking us the question, what system do we collect the most for? And what, what do we have the most games on? And like, what's our favorite and stuff? I think the game, the system I have the most games for is honestly the NES, but that's not the game I collect for, or the console I collect for the most. Uh, I collect the most for the Super Nintendo. And I didn't count all my games just because some of them are put away in bins and stuff. But I did go through and get the ones out that I play mostly. And... I didn't count those either, but you'll see them. I'm going to show them all to you as we go through. But I picked out my more classic or rare or valuable titles. Um, so I'm going to show them all to you. Everything else is pretty much your, your run-of-the-mill stuff. It's either not that great or something everybody has. But I'm going to go through and pretty much, I think almost every game in this video has been featured before, but... This is just going to be a marathon of running uh, my SNES collection and what I'm happy to have, what's rare, what's valuable, uh, what's just plain out fun. But I'm going to start out with uh, U.S. Gold Hurricanes. I think this game is just called Hurricanes. U.S. Gold who made it. Uh, this game, the only reason it's in here, I played it once. It's, it's a decently rare game. I think Nintendo Age has this game rated a 7 out of 10. So I saw this... Uh, online, I think, for really cheap, and I just picked it up to get a 7 out of 10 game. Um, but you basically run around and kick soccer balls at people. Uh, that's about it. You can, like, power up the ball and get, like, a steel ball, but it's kind of weird. But uh, the next game, a recent pickup in a video I just had, King of Dragons. It's a Capcom game. It's really, really awesome. I got this game for pretty cheap, considering... Um, it usually goes for around 50 and I picked it up for just a little over 30 and it's clean it's great great condition cart uh, I picked the dirtiest one I have another rare game that I was really wanting to play I think the first time I ever saw this game it was on Pete Doors game room and he was just talking about obscure uh, rare titles for the SNES and this is back when I first started collecting um, I think when I first started collecting, I met, I mostly watched a lot of uh, Pete Doors stuff and Minister Michigan stuff because they had pretty good tips. Uh, Michigan had a lot of good tips on, you know, what to do starting out collecting, and uh, Pete Doors just had a lot of a lot of cool videos on obscure games or stuff you really didn't know about. He had a lot of information that I liked when I started collecting. But Twisted Tales of Spike McFang, if you've seen any of my uh, video since December, you realize I had a waterfall of these come to me, but I tried forever to find this game and never could, but another game that I'm happy to have in my collection, again, when I was back home, another game I picked up, Zero Kamikaze, eh, Zero Kamikaze Squirrel, uh, another rare, obscure title um, on the SNES that I know collector-wise is worth, worth some weight, uh, Magic Sword, I don't think this game's rare at all, but it is a pretty awesome game. Uh, Mike Matei put it in one of the obscure games on Super Nintendo that you should play video on Cinemasker.com. Super Turrican, a classic game on Super Nintendo. Um, 
kind of like in the esque of Contra. This game's pretty cool. Super Ghouls and Ghosts. This game is hard as shit. Uh, not much more to say about it. You guys all know this game, but it's in my collection. I picked this game up cheap one at a, at a used game store. Incantation, another rare game. I think Nintendo Age has this game rated a 7. Uh, I picked this game up at a retail store for $16. Moving on. Tournament Fighters, TMNT Tournament Fighters. Uh, pretty fun game. I suck at fighting games, so I always get my ass kicked by the computer in this game, but I love playing fighting games with friends. It's a blast. Breath of Fire. I did have Breath of Fire 2. This game came in the initial lot that got me into actually collecting for the Super Nintendo, and Breath of Fire 2 was in that. But I traded Breath of Fire 2 with the booklet for some games I'm going to show you later, and I definitely came out on top uh, that trade, so... I'll show those to you later. Uh, Super R-Type. Uh, this is like a cave shooter. It's really fun. You guys have probably played it. I'll save that one. Final Fantasy 2. I haven't played this game yet. I'm not a huge Final Fantasy fan, but I think I'd like the Super Nintendo ones. Nosferatu. This is like a side-scrolling, beat-em-up kind of horror game. Uh, really glad to have this, even though this cart is nasty. I'll have to clean that up. Maybe you'll see that in a future like restoration video. Star Fox. Battletoads and Battle Maniacs. My brother picked me this game up and mailed it to me. Uh, he found it for kind of cheap. Run Saber, pretty awesome, like action platformer side scroller, and Knights of the Round, which is a awesome side scroller uh, beat 'em up game. Uh, that's about all for maybe just my straight up cart onlys. The last game. I actually featured in a video that was rare and really, you know, worth an awesome pickup for me that I always wanted on, uh, was at the top of my Super Nintendo collecting list is Evo, Search for Eden. i um, very, very happy to have this game, a nice Nintendo Age user, gave me a pretty good deal on this, so thank you very much. Uh, hopefully we'll get maybe a Let's Play of this in the, you know, coming up months. But next I'm moving on to my boxed games. Uh, some of these are going to be in universal cases. Uh, I really want to move on and put almost every rare or nicer game or even games that just have good cover art in a universal case. Uh, I was, when I started out, I wanted to be like a complete collector, but uh, financially it's just not for me. Um, universal, uh, the universal cases, I didn't think I'd like them. When I ordered them, I thought they'd look blurry or just shitty. And when I got them, I really, really like how they look. Uh, they're easy to stack. They protect the game well. Um, better than the cardboard, because when they're in the cardboard, maybe the cardboard protects the game, but then I have to worry about protecting the cardboard. So uh, with the universal cases, I'm definitely a big fan. I think this is the way I'm going to go. Uh, it gives me the cover art, blows it up, looks nice, and they look great on a shelf. So... Uh, you gotta display your games, man. I don't think there's any better way to do it than one of these babies. Uh, you know, a, a complete box with a plastic protector around it, um, like this, is great, too. This is a complete box Mega Man X. Uh, I did not pay a lot of money for this game at all, but, you know, the protectors keep it in pristine shape, too. But, if you can't find, you know, the box or want to drop the money on a box... It's great to have these. I am, you know, with the money I save on looking for the box, I do actually look for, like, instruction booklet lots, and I've actually been able to complete uh, a lot of great games or get the instruction booklets for a, a lot of great games by buying instruction booklet lots. So, basically, there's CIB without maybe, a, you know, pristine, or even sometimes all you can really find is a beat-up copy of just a box only, and on rarer titles, they still go for 35 to $50. So... Uh, these cost like 350 maybe even cheaper, so that's great. And as you can see here, Final Fantasy III, uh, one of the best games on Super Nintendo a lot, say. I haven't had the chance to delve into it, because I'm not a big RPG guy, but I do have this game. Kirby Superstar, eight games in one. I love Kirby. Very happy to have this. I think this is this and Kirby's Adventure 3 are the more harder-to-find games or more expensive uh, games on Super Nintendo, so I'm very happy to have this. Dracula X, awesome, awesome game. Very, very hard, but very, very fun. Um, really happy to have this. It's a rare game on Super Nintendo. It goes for about $100, $150. Uh, 
I guess some people would call this the coup de grace of my collection. Um, I've said this before, this game is not that rare, but it's very sought after. So, Earthbound, I do have this in my collection. It came with the initial lot of games that you can watch in my uh, reply to Ken16 bit talking about uh, what made us collectors. But, I do have Earthbound. One of my favorite games on Super Nintendo, and the whole reason I went out to buy a Super Nintendo in the first place, which, uh, you know, I was smiled upon on that day to buy that Super Nintendo because it came with a bunch of stuff. This game sadly wasn't in it. I bought that lot to play two games, Mega Man X and Contra 3, and neither one were in it, but all that stuff like Earthbound and then the games I'm showing you next, uh, some of them were. But Contra 3, I love this game. One of the games I remember playing at my uncle's house when I was a kid. Uh, very happy to have in my collection. This was in that lot too, along with Earthbound, one of the best games on Super Nintendo. Super Metroid, uh, very, very awesome game. Um, not that expensive, but it does go for about, you know, 35 card only now. A game that I really like on Super Nintendo that my brother got me into, Castlevania 4. In fact, any Castlevania game I like, my brother got me into because he's a big Castlevania fan. But it's awesome to have this game, too. Now, the next games I have uh, are legit um, box games. They're at the actual boxes. And I don't have this game complete because I do not have all the maps that go with it, but I do have just a straight-up instruction booklet, and that's Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. Secret of Evermore is another complete in-box game I have. Miss Pac-Man is great to find this. Uh, complete in box, and I bought it for as much as you buy just a card-only copy of uh, Miss Pac-Man. Eek the Cat. Uh, this is another rare game that, you know, isn't expensive at all, but it is rated like a 7, I think. 6 or 7 on Nintendo Age. So it is a rare game, but um, to have it complete in box for the money I paid for it, a lot of people don't know it's a harder to find game. Um, so it's cheap. And I pick it up because, you know, I don't know how often I'm going to find something like this. And this is in very good condition, so it's in my collection. A game I get uh, a lot of jealousy over is uh, this one right here. Demon's Crest, complete in box. The value on this game just keeps going up and up and up. Uh, I hear people saying now, like, you know, complete, it's got to be 100 or over. Uh, I didn't pay that. Uh, I did pay quite a bit, but nowhere, you know, near 100. We were getting there, but I, the price of this game, I think, has skyrocketed for some reason. But I do have Demon's Crest complete in the box. Okay, so this next game holds significance because, like I said, I had Breath of Fire 2 with the guide and I traded it. Um, I didn't trade it for this game complete in the box, but I did trade it for the cart. And that is Super Mario RPG. I also traded... Breath of Fire with the with the guidebook for just a copy of Turtles in Time, which sadly I don't have with me. That game is in New York with my girlfriend, so um, I'm not showing that one off, but I did trade it for this game, so Breath of Fire 2 for Turtles in Time and Super Mario RPG. Uh, couldn't pass that up, but I did uh, go through and complete this uh, later on after I got the card. Another awesome complete in box game I have is Secret of Mana. I almost have two complete copies of this game. Um, all I need is the, the poster and another box, and I think I'll have another complete copy of Secret of Mana. I have this game cart, box, instruction manual, poster, and strategy guide. So this game is so beautiful. It's so fun to play. I'm very glad to have a, a game like this in my collection complete. So the last two, I've featured these before, but they're kind of the heavy hitters in my collection. I will show this game first, just because the last one's my favorite game in my collection. Uh, and that is Chrono Trigger, complete in box. Uh, I did put this together for a little under $20, so it's pretty cool that I got a game that expensive for the price uh, I found the, I got the cart in a lot, and I bought all the, the stuff off a guy at a game store that this dude had just dropped a box off of just random stuff, and the box and the guides and stuff were in there, 
So this game is complete. I'm pretty sure it's complete. I might have to put a map or two in here. But uh, yeah, Chrono Trigger. For the price I have invested in it, I wouldn't mind just throwing out a bit of cash for a map. But it's a pretty cool one to have in my collection. And the last one, I brag about it all the time. If you watch my videos, I've said it a bunch. But Mega Man X3 for the Super Nintendo. Uh, I really like this game. It's freaking hard as hell. Like, I go through, I play Mega Man X, and at times I struggle with Mega Man X, but it's nowhere near this game. When I start, uh, you know, if I ever do a Let's Play or a walkthrough of this game, I'm going to have to practice my ass off and just, like, strategize a lot, because, good lord, um, I get my ass beat so bad. But that pretty much does it for... The rare games in my collection. I do have a, a lot more, like, tub of just obscure titles. But, um, it, it was awesome to make this, this video. Uh, I hope I'm entered to the contest. If not, man, it was fun making the video. It's awesome watching your stuff. And, you know, you got a sub and a response, uh, to, you know, put on your channel and whatnot. But, that's my SNES collection. I'm really looking at expanding it. You know, there's a lot of other titles out there I'd like to get. Uh, this year, I think I'm going to kind of focus on just buying some some bigger ones uh, that I really want. Mega Man 7, Harvest Moon, Super Turrican 2, and Wild Guns are probably my biggest ones that I want uh, this year. So if I can find, you know, one of those every three months, I narrow it down to that. I got a lot of playing to do ahead of me. Hopefully you'll see me and my friends uh, play these games, you know, in the coming months. But it was awesome. Machine Games TX. Have a good one. You got an awesome channel. I'll see you guys star side. Ciao.